Did Jesus die on a cross or a torture stake? Whoever does not carry his torture stake and come after me cannot be my disciple. Luke 14, 27, New World Translation. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Luke 14, 27, New International Version. Everywhere the word cross is found in a New Testament, the New World Translation replaces it with the words torture stake. The Watchtower does this for at least two reasons. One, the Greek word is staros, and the Watchtower claims that this should be translated as torture stake. Two, the Watchtower teaches that the idea of Jesus dying on a cross originated in the 3rd century with the Roman Emperor Constantine. They claim Rome was having internal struggles, so Constantine tried to make peace by blending Christian practices with pagan practices. One of these compromises was to replace the torture stake with the cross that represented the Chaldean god Talmuz. A study of the Bible and church history explains why Christians believe Jesus died on a cross and that it did not originate with third century pagan worship. The Bible provides two clues that support a T-shaped cross. The first is found in the Gospel of Matthew. It says that after Jesus was crucified, they placed a sign above his head, Matthew 23. 37. Had it been a torture stake, Jesus' hands would have been over his head, and the passage would have read, They placed a sign above his hands. The other clue from the Bible comes from John's Gospel. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. John 20, 25, New International Version. John uses the plural for nails when he says where the nails were. Had Jesus died on a stake, there would have been one nail, singular, that went through both of his hands. But on a cross, Jesus' hands would have been outstretched and the nails, plural, would have been driven through each hand separately. Church history provides further evidence that the cross did not originate in the third century. In 160 AD, Justin Martyr describes the cross. Now, no one could say or prove that the horns of a unicorn represent any other fact or figure than the type which portrays the cross. For the one beam is placed upright, from which the highest extremity is raised up into a horn. Then the other beam is fitted onto it, and the ends appear on both sides as horns joined on to the one horn and the part which is fixed in the center on which are suspended those who are crucified. In 180 A.D., Irenaeus likewise describes the cross. The very form of the cross, too, has five extremities, two in length, two in breadth, and one in the middle on which the person rests who is fixed by the nails. Sometime around the second century, the Alexamenos Graffito was engraved on a wall depicting a human-like figure who was attached to a cross and who had the head of a donkey. To the left of the image is a young man apparently intended to represent Alexamenos, who is raising one hand in a gesture possibly suggesting worship. Beneath the cross, there is a caption written in Greek which means Alexandamos worships God. Although this image was originally graved as a mocking gesture against Christianity, it still stands as substantial evidence that Jesus died on a cross 
and was worshipped as God before the time of Constantine. It becomes very difficult to trust the New World Translation's use of the term torture stake in place of cross when the reader takes the time to compare the evidence from the Bible and church history.